This ain't whiskey, it's hogwash! Yes, Jim. If you're a discriminating drinker, old destructor might be more to your taste, Jim. Yes. That's just what the new commander of the West Point Military Academy needs to get his juices flowing. Well, sir, I do believe you're gonna turn all those college boys into real soldiers for you three. Gonna turn them into soldiers just like me. West Point won't know what hit it, General. The Confederacy won't know what hit it when my boys reach the front line. <laughs> They'll have the entire South up in flames before you can whistle Dixie. <laughs> Fill her up again. What do you savages want with me? Theodore Steele began the most dangerous period in American-British relations since the War of 1812. As tensions mounted, we were invited to call on the Governor of Upper Canada. There, we also found Sir Jonathan Chatsworth. You present us with a most unfortunate situation, Governor. It's nothing to do with us, Sir Jonathan. It was the Mohawks. Yes. You know perfectly well the Mohawks have been British allies for centuries, so it looks as if we're behind the damn kidnapping. And are we? Of course not, Fogg. We have no wish to see Britain and America at war again. Well, that's a relief. Yep, Fogg. I didn't bring you here for you, you to make unpleasant remarks. You didn't bring me here at all. I came of my own volition. Look, we have a crisis on our hands. Governor, I understand that American troops have crossed the border. There have been incidents, provocations. It's getting very ugly. Which is why we so appreciate your offer to use your dirigible in the search. What offer? Ah. Ah? Well, I did rather assume that you would... That you would do your duty by your country. Chatsworth. You know where my duty lies, do you? And you used to lie with the British Secret Service before you chose to, uh, throw in the towel. And in my resignation is the phrase I prefer, Chatsworth. As a protest against the service's woefully incompetent management. It was you who let go the wheel, Phileas. Well, there isn't much honor in being an armchair critic. Abraham Lincoln himself was due to see Steele at West Point, Mr. Fogg, for the passing out parade. We have hundreds of troops searching the forest. They found nothing. kidnapped, but I really could do with a drink. What do you say we have a short stop for some fire water, huh, Chief? Chief! Chief! Damn, I see some cigar store Indians, so this is crazy. Why do you say something? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, I understand now. You're not interested in conversation.
Cooper's books when I was a boy. Just think, it, it was in woods like these that the last Mohicans tracked down the Mingos to rescue the Monroe sisters. You, Jules, are a romantic. Sometimes think you're living life like one of the characters in the books you keep promising to write. Why not? Life should be filled with drama and suspense and wonderful third act reunions. But it never is, Vern. Can't shape reality like you can a book. You can try. I think we have found the nest, boys. Now all there is to do is smoke out the insects within. These are the Adantis, sir. Uh, there are peaceful people. I don't think they'd be involved in something like this. Sergeant, you know too much about Indians and not enough about war. Company! Forward! What is that? Hmm? Smoke signals. I'm sure of it. It's a message. It's a fire, Vern. Someone has set fire to something. Large. Like a village. Let's go and have a look. So. Where have you hidden the general? Speak, boy! I didn't take him. Then how did you come to be wearing his hat? I'm gonna first. Fitted me. But not for long. We searched the village, sir. There's no sign of the general anywhere. And the rest of the Indians have fled into the woods. Which leaves only you to answer the questions. We kidnap nobody. That is an untruth. And I will not tolerate untruths from Indians. You people don't know what truth is, do you? Well, you were dealing with Custon now, so you had better start learning. Easy, easy. You should be brushing up on your education too, Lieutenant, and your subject should be respect for others. We thought that this might help you concentrate on the lesson. You are interfering with United States Army business. And you're invading British Canada. Take my advice. Get out. If you do interfere with the United States Army, there will be blood shed between our two nations. Yes, but not this, boys. Not here and not now. Why are you protecting these kidnappers? Are they working for you? Oh, for goodness sake. What idiot decided you were fit for a commission? I will be sending a full report on this incident to Washington. Telling everyone exactly how brave you were, no doubt. Company! Better move out! You have not heard the last of George Armstrong Custer, lady. I promise you that. I'll always remember you, Lieutenant. It's so nice to meet a soldier who takes such good care of his hair. Company, forward! You really pushed him, Rebecca. Well, he's a bullying prig, and I hate that sort of man. I thank you, strangers, for saving my life. Is it true you're in search of the drunken general? Yes. Do you know who took him? It was not the Mohawks or any Iroquois tribe. Oh, really? And who was it then? Ridiculous tunnels, caves, and secret entrances. What sort of Indians are you? Fairly sophisticated ones, General. What? Well, you're not a damn Mohawk at all! General Steele. The flower of American chivalry. It's whiskey. It's all that damn whiskey I drank. It's coming back to haunt me, though. 
horrible, but well-deserved way. I'll, I'll give it up, I tell you. I'll never touch another drop of 